Andy Boas here with Next Pittsburgh, and you probably know where we are. We're at PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, and we're going to find out this week how they keep this lawn looking so pristine. How is this diamond looking so beautiful game after game after game? It's all thanks to Matt Brown, the director of field operations here. So, director of field operations, I guess, what does that mean? Basically means we take, a, take care of anything inside the walls, so um, as well as the ivy in center field. So day in, day out, just managing the turf between not only the, the pirate schedule, but also the events and, and, and from large scale like concerts to small scale, which is baseball tournaments and stuff like that. So here's what I'm really curious about. I see all these little like foam dots everywhere. What, what does that mean? Yeah. So right now we're doing a, a fertilizer and insecticide application. So you'll see the sprayer moving uh, in shallow left, left field over here. Um, the dots are just to, to let him mark where he's actually sprayed so he doesn't have too much overlap. So it's basically just foam. Um, if we left them for long enough, they, they, gradually, uh, they gradually go away in about a half hour or so. But um, this is actually a soil application, so you can see the guy's actually watering in um, after he sprays. When the team's out of town, we're normally doing two to three different applications, whether that be to target for pests or for different pathogens, funguses, um, just and fertilizers, just certain things. Uh, and like I, like I said, we time these out at different times of the year to make sure uh, the turf not only is healthy, but also it can, it, it can sustain the wear and tear um, throughout the season. How is the game affected if like the turf isn't perfect? The biggest thing is just, is just player safety. Um, so we want to have... Uh, we want to have the safest field, field possible. And then the next big thing is consistency. The field plays the same way day in, day out, whether it's 95 degrees or 55 degrees. That's what the players are really looking for. Do you hate AstroTurf? Uh, no, I don't, I don't say I hate it. I, obviously, I'm partial, I'm partial to natural turf. Um, I, think, I think artificial definitely has its place where in like high schools where you get a, a wide variety of sports on one field and you get a lot of wear and tear. But... Um, we do hear from the, from the athletes quite a bit that they, they prefer playing on a natural surface. And so let's say like someone's like, you know, catching a ball, they're diving and they just like take like a, a giant divot yep. out of there. Like, are you watching and like freaking out? No. So we get that, we get that a lot uh, just from, and it's, it's not too, too much actually during the game. It's mostly pregame, like when the pitchers warm up or um, you'll see like, um, different wear areas, um, just like where the shortstop stands, like front of the mounds, like different stuff like that. It's not like football where we're getting widespread uh, divots all the time. But you think about it, it's kind of like a golf course. When you take a wedge, you you play you re, you replace it, and then um, kind of push the turf back up. And and we top dress uh, a green sand with seed in it, um, so that'll help us help our divots fill in a little quicker. And like, what is your lawn like at home? <laughs> it's not as good as this, I'll say that. But uh, no, like the the last thing we want to do when we go home is mow the grass. So it's, I mean, but obviously I know the basics. I do the basics. So it looks okay. Okay, so we see like out here what's happening. So are there other like behind the scenes area where you keep, where you keep equipment or different other supplies? Yeah, we have um, basically four to five different areas in the stadium where we keep di different things as far as equipment, supplies. This is our third base storage room. Um, so like I said, stuff that's easily accessible to us that we might need during a game, like you see the hoses on the wall, um, the fertilizer, or the, uh, the spreaders over here that we actually put out. So this is conditioner. These are three different types of basically, um, it's, a, it's a condition that we put on top of the actual surface itself. Um, and they each have different kind of kind of qualities about them. So whether we're trying to hold more water in the surface, whether we're trying to actually release water or absorb water. If you come to a game, you can see the variations in color in just some of the, some of the conditioners we use. So um, the biggest thing about this is the playability. So you, when you see the player slide, this is actually the material that they're sliding on. So we, we typically put out seven or eight bags every single day. And then these are just backup bases over here in case something weird happens? Yeah, so these are, we have three different sets of bases. So we kind of have a practice set um, and then two game sets. So those get switched after every three innings. Um, we just basically, we, some, some guys paint them. We actually scrub them. Um, so basically just like a scrubbing bubbles and then um, a little bit of elbow grease to, to get them clean after every three innings. God, it's just wild that it's someone's job to clean a base. Like I just never would have thought about that. Yeah, yeah. So 
But uh, um, yeah, you'll see kind of the different tools that we use, our drags, uh, brooms, obviously rakes. Everybody's wild by the grass, but um, if you think about it, six of the nine players play on dirt. Yeah. So that's, that's where we spend 75% of our day is actually maintaining the mound, the plate areas, the infield skin. Um, and that's, that's, the, uh, that's the toughest part of the job, um, I would say, from, just from a strict, strict groundskeeping maintenance standpoint. Um, is making sure our dirt has adequate moisture. And, it's, and like I said, that, that's where that consistency comes in. That just like blew my mind that you're really like a dirt caretaker more yeah, exactly. than that's like the, but that's sort of the, the you know, most of it is dirt. I mean, most of the game's happening on dirt. That's crazy. Exactly. And that's why you see um, baseball's the only sport with, with tarps. So um, obviously football uses them um, pregame, but obviously during the game, we're the, really the only ones that have to physically protect the, the infield skin from from getting too much rain um, and that's why you see those that's why we get the delays um, just because if we get those heavy rains this this the skin can only maintain so much water so that's why you see that are there online forums where you're talking to other people who are you know working in this industry and like comparing tips on like okay we got a freeze coming what should we do to keep this grass okay or something yeah and like a, um, it, it's a it's a very it's a relatively small industry just yeah. the sports sports turf in general um, and in golf course in general honestly um, so we we all we have a, an annual groundskeepers meeting um, um, kind of a national meeting and then also a major league groundskeepers meeting so so we all we all know each other and the nice thing about that is um, you all see the same problems, yeah. um, and we, we, we do that a lot with, like I, like I mentioned, the large-scale concerts. We all talk to each other a lot and bounce ideas because, obviously, um, chances are that uh, another guy has had the same issues that, you, that you've had. So, um, yeah, we're always bouncing ideas off each other, asking, uh, asking each other what, what the other person is doing or what they've done in a certain situation to, to help our, our facility. You can't share game secrets, but you can share dirt secrets. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Have you, like, do, do you ever get compliments from the players? Be like, gosh, it was, like, great out there today? Um, yeah, once in a while. Honestly, this is kind of a profession where um, it's no news is good news. Um, <laughs> when, when, they're not, when they're not saying anything, you know it's consistent. You know it's playing well. So the players are always very happy with our surface here. Um, they, they might ask for little stuff, little things to be tweaked, but... Um, overall, there, like I said, that that consistency is what we're striving so we're striving for, and um, they seem to be really happy with how the field plays. What does January look like for you? The way I describe it is that's our time to to work a normal forty-hour work week and and kind of relax and take a breath. But I would hope you're working a twenty-hour work week to make up for some of these summer yeah, exactly. weeks. Exactly. So um, no, but it's a, it's a lot of planning. It's a lot of uh, all right, making sure our supplies are 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 ordered. Um, that's when we hire the majority of our staff. This is another one of our storage areas. Um, just basically, we call it our lower shop. Um, you'll see the backpack blowers and the vacuums. That's, and that's what we pick up, like the sunflower seeds and the gum and, and everything after the, after, the, after the game is over. So you're going through the stands. With, so these are all like little vacuum cleaners. This is just, this, the, the, the cleaning department does the stands, so it's something similar. They blow everything into okay. piles. But yeah, this is just strictly for the field. Oh, so for the like the players' sunflower seeds. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It and takes like a like twenty of these suckers to suck up all those sunflower seeds. Yeah, we have about two and a half acres out here, so it's uh, it would take one guy quite a bit of time if it was just one guy to, to get everything. And where do you watch the game from? Uh, my office is actually right underneath the right field foul pole, so I have two windows. Um, that I can actually physically see the field. Um, but other than that, like during the games is when I, I really try to catch up on just my overall office work and, and, and scheduling and, and like ordering more dirt. Exactly. Plan, basically planning for, for the next month and a half out. So this is our main access point, like when we have the large scale concerts, but everything gets, gets shuttled in through, through here. So, um, it's a nice access point. I do wish we had another one, um, just so we could we could be a little more efficient on the loadouts and everything. But these are all the toys that we get to play with every day. Um, so you can see everything that we need to to maintain the field is in this little shop area. Um, you'll see not only our equipment storage, but also our dirt storage. So these these large white bags over here are actually our infield mix, which is what composes the actual area that's actually under the conditioner. Um, that we work with. Um, the field is actually constructed out of sand. So that's what's in this next bin. It's a, it's a silica sand from Ohio. 
Um, your home state. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so that's actually what the profile is. That's what the grass grows on. That's why the, the field drains so quickly. Like when fans see us dump the tarp uh, after a rain delay, typically there's a pretty big puddle in the outfield, but because it's built on sand, it goes down extremely quickly. The two mowers that we mow the outfield with, we can normally mow the outfield in about an hour. Um, everybody's big question is always, how do you get the stripes in the field? So if you look at the, if you look at the mower, um, these are what are called real mowers. Um, and it's actually this, a combination of this front Wiley roller and this back, this back roller that actually roll over the leaf blade. And that's what creates that striping pattern in the outfield. And how often are you cutting the, the grass? So when teams in town, we mow every single day. Um, when the team's out of town, usually every third to fourth day. Um, cause like I said, um, mowing, mowing grass is actually a stressor to it. Yeah. Um, just, you just think about it. It's almost like cutting your hair, um, because it actually opens up the leaf blade and then it actually has to seal itself shut to, to, to prevent itself from losing too much moisture. So, um, we try to mow as little as possible when the team's out of town, but it's also a point where we don't want the grass getting too long and then we're cutting too much off. And what's that optimal like length? We're at one inch right now. Um, so yeah, we try to, we try to stay as consistent as possible. Um, one of the big things about it is that you think about it when you're constantly mowing in the same pattern, um, the grass does tend to lay over after a while. So we're doing different things as far as rotary mowing to actually stand the grass up and, and, and cut it as well. Brooming the pattern opposite of the way we're actually mowing. So that helps a lot as far as like playability and you'll hear players say the, the ball snakes in the outfield. Um, and that, that kind of helps prevent that. Um, and that's one of the big, the big things that we've started doing to, to prevent that, that snaking effect when the ball's actually rolling. There's so much to think of. I mean, it's just like it's a science, it's yeah. an art, it's like biology, yeah. botany. Gosh. Okay, there's one other machine that was sort of cute and I wanted to know about. This one over here, which the, um, the Rudd Dyna Pack. Yeah. This is the CC92 model, looks yeah. like. <laughs> yeah. So this is a roller, um, a one-ton roller. And basically what we do with this is that um, before the home stands, um, we actually edge every single edge on the warning track in the infield. And then we backfill those edges um, to make sure you get an absolutely smooth transition because um, you don't want lips, you don't want bat hops on the infield. Um, so this is just something that like when we backfill those edges, we'll actually come in and roll the dirt and pack it into place. That way it stays firm. Um, Cause what would happen is if we didn't use this on the edges, um, we kind of just left that, that dirt kind of loose. Um, when it rained, it would get extremely soft and muddy. Well, Matt, thank you so much for showing us around. I'll let you go back to work because clearly there is a lot to do, but we really appreciate you taking the time yeah, for no chatting with us. Thank you guys for coming out. I appreciate yeah. it. See you next time.